Oh my gosh. Botic van der Janskulp shocks Carlos Alcaraz out of the U.S. Open. This guy takes him out, and Carlitos Alcaraz has gone out in pretty shocking fashion. Uh, amazing match from Botic. He played very well and didn't let up at all. But Alcaraz could not find it, didn't get the breaks he was looking for when they presented themselves, and he goes out in round two of the U.S. Open. So this blows open a lot of people's brackets, and my favorite for going into the tournament is out. So we're going to talk about how the draw reacts to this, how the tournament looks going forward, and what this means for Alcaraz in kind of the patterns we're seeing in his career. So much to get into. Thanks for being here. This is The Slice presented by Betway. Wow, that's a big one. In round two, Alcaraz goes down. Are you shocked? I'm shocked, as you can tell. Um, what I'm also shocked by is the fact that I won another tennis match today. If you listened to the podcast yesterday with JP Hovey, uh, you should have known that I'm playing a tournament right now. And I just played the second seed in the tournament tonight, and I won. Although I will say he had to retire after the first set. He was injured, uh, but that's a win for me. And the kid's name, his name's Michael. He's a great player. He's like 15. He would have killed me if he was healthy. Uh, so if you're watching, Michael, you're going to have, have better luck. Rest up. Watch the tournament. And by the tournament, I mean the U.S. Open that has now not has now lost Carlos Alcaraz from it. He is no longer in the tournament, and that is crazy after a big loss tonight against Botic van der Zanskop. We're going to get into that, but before we do, this is the best bets of the day presented by Betway. Now, looking forward to tomorrow, uh, Brandon Nakashima has been on a, rain, a roll, and I just looked through the book there on Betway, and they got Nakashima as the f- odds favorite to beat Lorenzo Musetti. So to me, that's got some value on Musetti there at plus 140 uh, as the underdog, and I think that's crazy. So I, I see some value in Musetti there, and I would hit that if you're into that and you're into betting responsibly. Thanks to Betway for supporting the show. That was Best Bets of the Day presented by Betway. Okay, what happened? Botic van der Janschkrup takes out the Prince of Tennis, the man who's defining his own era in three sets, straight sets him in a way that only uh, an expressionless Dutchman could do. Really, this was an interesting watch because I came into this match after the set, first set had already been done. I was playing my match. I haven't even showered yet, as you can tell. Um, and you go, okay, is this just a, a situation where Alcaraz loses the set, turns it around, and then it's kind of a standard four-set match? Uh, Bote van der Zanschlup's had a tough year. A lot of people are talking about it. He hasn't won two matches in a row all year. And now he's just beaten Denis Shapovalov and now Carlos Alcaraz at the U.S. Open. But you're looking for Alcaraz to, to find something, to find a moment of inspiration, to find a level to go up. And in that second set, that just never really happened. He pushed and he had gaps and potential moments to take it and kind of run away with that set. But every time he did, Botic van Janskul moved super well into position, blocked it, came up with a big serve, came up with a big dig, some crazy pickups from Botic is what I call him. I'm not saying his whole name all night long here. Um, so Botic van Janskul just kept slamming the door. And that seemed to frustrate Alcaraz and stop him from being able to find his groove. And bad sign, you know, he's obviously fairly emotionless, but he also had, you know, a lot of frustration that you could feel going on, a little bit listless out there. And his coach, Juan Marti, Juan Carlos Ferrero, and his 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 uh, his manager essentially just looked like this all night. They looked just like depressed like they looked like they knew their player didn't have it that night at night they weren't getting up i didn't see any clips of them standing up and jump and fist bumping even when alcaraz broke back in the third set when he was he went down a break and you're thinking this is he's in serious trouble he broke back got it back on serve and then got to four four we didn't see any emotion from his his team there so something it seemed to be just a really weird night there for alcaraz and his team and he goes out because it's hard to win on the atv tour and people are saying, I've heard, you know, I heard some Jose Morgat, Mor, 
Morgado or whatever his name is, um, say it's one of the biggest upsets of all time. It's obviously a massive upset, especially with the way that Botic's been playing this year. But Botic, Botic has been the top 25 player before, ranked, consistently seated at majors for a while, especially in 2022. So he's a good player, and he's just kind of found it tonight, and he played a good match. But, you know, there's definitely been crazier ones you've seen. Stakovsky beat Federer. You've seen guys like Djokovic, or you've seen, uh, I forget who Djokovic went out to in the 2017 Australian Open um, in the first round. Like, those are those are like the crazy upsets that just blow your mind. This one blows your mind, but Bodek Van de did it to him. Alcaraz would have beat other players tonight, uh, you know, who aren't playing as well. So we'll, let's get into the stats here uh, because that's the main story. Just some crazy, crazy um, stats. One of the main ones that stands out to me is first serve win percentage. Alcaraz typically has a very, you know, when he's playing well and when he has is he doesn't have one of the biggest servers on tour, but he has a very high first serve win percentage behind it. He only won 60% of his first serve points today. Uh, contrasting that to Botic, who won 78% of his. So just a massive difference there. Win percentage on second serve, Al- Alcaraz was able to... Uh, win that battle but that didn't matter botic also got to net more than alcraz did a lot more 35 times and he won 80 percent of those points so he came forward super well and alcraz didn't have maybe necessarily his footing that he has on other surfaces which i'll talk about in a minute here tonight and yeah winners you know alcraz had more unforced errors than winners that's not normal for him when he's playing well so that you know, that shows a pretty tight match there from Botek and it shows a poor match from Alcaraz. And those things are always intertwined. But watching Alcaraz move around out there, you know, he did roll his ankle before the tournament. So that doesn't help things. But I really think now it's kind of clear to me that hard courts are going to be Carlos Alcaraz's worst surface when his career is said over and done, I think. he To me, he looks more natural on the natural surfaces. And the thing that's separates him the most from every other player on tour i think is his athleticism and his movement and his movement gets accentuated on the grass and on the clay the way he can move because not everyone can move well on those surfaces he can move, move like perfectly on both and he can and everyone can move pretty well on hard so his movement becomes less of a competitive advantage for him on hard and maybe even he just doesn't move as well on hard as he does on other surfaces i don't know um, I think another factor into the into the way Alcaraz played here, but also in Cincinnati, is the balls. These U.S. Open Series balls from Wilson are lighter, and they fly this year. I've talked about it. I interviewed players in Montreal extensively about the balls and how hard they are to control. And from what I've seen, watching players who use a ton of top spin, like Alcaraz, the ball flies on them, and I think it hurts the way that they can they feel the ball. So they don't have, they don't feel their game as well as they normally do. And when Alcaraz won the U S open here two years ago, the balls were heavier and that's probably what, you know, that's a factor in what, how he feels comfortable is out there is because he's got all the power. He doesn't need any, he doesn't need the balls to fly for him to have power, but the flying balls can make him miss more, which we saw tonight. And I've seen with a lot of other players who play with Thompson, Felix, out jail, you see him, Bunch of guys I watched in Montreal. So that's another interesting point, I think. And then I think there's also just Alcraz, there's like the patterns in the chaos of his career, which is a very small sample size. You think last year, Alcraz wins Wimbledon over Djokovic. Incredible moment in his career. Then goes to Cincinnati, plays a super tight match in Cincinnati, which he had very good chances to win that in two sets, loses it. Tough match for him. And then he had a big letdown in form for a few months after that and it's the end of the year this year he wins wimbledon again beats Djokovic even more emphatically then goes and plays the olympics and has a really tough loss to out to Djokovic there and he's crying afterwards and then he comes in here and plays terribly in in cincinnati and terribly here at the us open so we're 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 noticing if there's even a trend to be noticed it's that you know letdowns in form after tough losses and winning wimbledon i guess is uh is a pattern for 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 Alcaraz. It's uh it's interesting to see. And I'm not worried about him at all. People are people are gonna lose their mind over this. So now he's won 
three of the last six majors. So he's won 50% of the last six majors. Uh, and that's something to be worried about for some people. So I think everyone needs to calm down. Yes, this is a bad loss to Botev van der Zandskulp in the second round of the US Open, but it is tennis. And that shows how hard it is to win. Guys like Botev van der Zandskulp can come out and say, put some respect on my name. All right. Who, somebody else you should put some respect on their name is Canadian Gabriel Diallo, friend of the show, multiple time appearer. And he just took out Arthur Feast in the second round to make the third round where he will play Tommy Paul. Now this young cat is like six, eight. I want to say six, seven, six, eight. He's a monster. And he played an incredible match today. Four sets uh, over the Frenchman. I'll uh, gave is a French Canadian. Uh, that was an incredible performance from him today. I believe it was seven, five, six, seven, six, four, six, four, just dug in and got the win. And people are saying, is he the best player in Canada right now? Is he the best player in Canada? Is it, it's hard to make an argument that he's not, especially in this tournament. No, but he's close to now breaking the top hundred. And, and, you know, if he goes crazy and beats Tommy Paul, he's definitely going to be in the top hundred and his, you know, life's going to change even more, but this is a great result for him. He won three matches in qualifying and now he's into the third round. Great story there from the Canadian after a pretty abysmal Canadian tournament so far. All right, let's go look at the other scores from today. Uh, Yannick Center, no issues. Hour and 39 minutes over Mickelson. So is he now the top, clear top favorite on the top half of the draw? I think that's obvious. Um, Iga Shriantek, back to no... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, no messing around against Shibaharo. Six bagels, six breadstick in an hour. Uh, Gad Dabrowski and Rootliff, the doubles number one in the world, Canadian, uh, beats Fernandez and Putin save a 6 4 6 2. Mukova over Osaka, 6 3 7 6. Uh, Mukova is swagging out after her amazing behind the back shot. She now beats Naomi Osaka, one of the best players of the last decade in women's tennis. And Botic van de Janskop takes out the third seed, Carlitos Alcaraz in three sets in two hours and 19 minutes. I mean, it's crazy. I should have started the show by saying this is upset city. There are a lot of seeds have fallen now at the U.S. Open on the men's side, especially Machak takes out Sebastian Corda, who had big hopes here in two hours, 6-4, 6-2, Thanks for coming out. Jasmine Paolini takes out Pliskova, who retired three points into the match. Duration of the match, six minutes. Thanks for coming out. Pagula, Pagula takes out Kennan, 7-6, 6-3. Medvedev is through in three, no issues there. Wozniacki through in two, Putin save it through. Kruger takes out Mira and Driva. The 21st seed is out. Demon Hour, uh, the 10th seed for the men, comes is playing well as he gets through Vertanen in three sets. Tommy Paul gets through Purcell in two and a bit sets. Uh, Alina Rybaikina out, withdraws. Very weird scenarios there. It looks like her coach has potentially been banned by the WTA. Uh, he's been removed from the coaching lists, I guess. And uh, that's an interesting development, so keep your eye on that story. Jordan Thompson takes out Hubert Hercatch, 7-6, 6-1, That one sucks for Hubie, but he is coming back from injury, so you got to give him a bit of a break there. Haddad Maya goes 6-2, 6-1 on Cerebus Tormo. There you have it, Gabriel Diallo over Arthur Fies. Let's look at this. Hey, let's just take a look, quick look at the stats. First serve win percentage, 77 for the big man from Canada. 37 winners to 44 on first errors. It wasn't the highest quality match from Feast, but Gabe did close it out like a boss and played great tennis down the stretch. So he is one to watch, as I've said. Count Sky through. Bolter goes out in two sets. Draper through over Diaz Acosta. No issues there. Dan Evans follows up his five-set marathon. Longest match in US Open history with a clean three-set win over Mario Navone. Pretty impressive there for the Brits. Two Dan Evans and, and Jack Draper through. Sam Sonova through. Pavlion Chunkeva through. Ninu Borges takes out Tanasi Kokonakis in three sets after Thanos beats uh, Sitsipas. So that's a bit of a Bit of a fail after taking out the big man and not being able to go for a run there. Arnaldi threw Safulin. O'Connell over Bellucci. Mensich threw again over Scoot Schoolcat. That is crazy. Two sets down, comes back. He's on a run. Mensich, you got to love it. 
and we are into doubles, which unfortunately we do not not have time to cover. So let's take a look because we didn't do a, do a show yesterday. Let's take a look at the draws. All right, we're into the third round uh, on the top half at least. So Yannick Center will play O'Connell next. Shouldn't have any issues there. Gabriel Diallo versus Tommy Paul. Love to see it. Mensik versus Borges. Kaboli versus Medvedev. That's a tough. Kaboli versus Medvedev is a tough match for Medvedev. I think Kaboli could could cause some serious issues. Uh, Botic van der Zanschko through to, to play Draper. And look at this. David Gonfan to play Machak. David Gonfan quietly rejuvenating his career after uh, playing challengers, going through it. He's now qualified, I believe, or maybe he got straight in, and he's into the third round, though. He beats Manorino, and that's a great result for him. Uh, Demon Hour to play Dan Evans. Arnaldi to play Jordan Thompson. So it just feels to me like the uh, top half is unbelievably, or the third quarter, I guess, the 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 um, the, the Alcaraz quarter is wide open now. Somebody rude's there, but he's not confident right now. Um, but you almost say it's well, it's his quarter now as the highest seed in it. Um, but that is going to be interesting. One of these people is going to be a semifinals at the U.S. Open. Rude's been there before, um, but no one else has even like sniffed at that. So that's going to be awesome uh, for whoever who for whoever gets out of that quarter. All right, men's singles round three matches that are playing tomorrow uh, on the bottom half of the draw. Common Sana. Comensana versus Fritz. To Comensana took out Hugo Humbert, the 17th seed. Another seed fallen. Uh, Nakashima versus Musetti. We already gave you the odds for that one. Do with that what you will. Echeverry versus Verev. Rublev versus Lehechka. Both guys had to come from down from two sets to love down in their matches, Rublev and Lehechka. So they will be equally tired. Um, Greeksburg versus Dimitrov. Shelton versus Tiafo, and then Popperin versus Djokovic. Cam Popperin, who is, you know, he's won two matches now at the Australian or at the US Open, has followed up with his form, actually killing Martinez in uh, uh, less time than it took Djokovic to play just over two sets. He beat Martinez 6 2, 6 4, 6 0. So Popperin is feeling good. And we saw, we see that the Djokovic Popperin match is scheduled for tomorrow night. So people are saying that Djokovic did some. Sh conniving things you can do when you've won 24 majors to get his match at night because he would prefer to play at night especially against a server like Poprin. uh so that's gonna be interesting anyways the tournament now Djokovic is my favorite coming from the bottom center and Medvedev will have to play each other in the quarterfinals so only one of them's coming through and just with the way that Djokovic is riding his his high after the Olympics still has played less tennis than anyone else I think he's still got that energy still got that fire and got really no pressure on him other than the pressure he's going to put on himself, but he's been dealing with that his whole career and obviously thriving. Djokovic going for number 25. I think he's the favorite now uh, with Alcaraz out. Might have even been the favorite with Alcaraz in, but that's the news. Alcaraz out to Botic van de Janskop. Leave your thoughts below as always. Subscribe as always. Thank you for being here as always. We'll see you tomorrow back here on The Slice.